And actually, wallahi al-azim, I can honestly say to you, there are situations I personally know today, right now, where there are women who actively look to be a co-wife. For example, there's a woman, she's a bit older maybe, she has her own life. Mm-hmm. It's not that she can't get married, she can get married to someone who doesn't have another wife, mm-hmm. but she has her own life. She says, look, I don't want the hassle of this, you know, I can't manage this thing mm-hmm. of having my husband with me all the time. There are countries where there are way more women than men. Mm, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, Islam, it, it's wrong for a person just to put these like blinders on and they only see what's in front of them in their country. Okay, if you don't see it to be suitable in your country right now, but you believe it's from Allah, but you don't believe it's suitable for you, Allah didn't require you to do it. Allah didn't ask you to do it. If you don't believe it, it doesn't work for you. But then don't say it doesn't work for everybody right, in the world. Right, right. Because there are many, many countries where it works very, very well and it's needed. And there are countries where there are a huge number of of, uh, of women outnumbering uh, men. There are there are women who, and I'm talking about in societies where there are, you know there are plenty of opportunities for marriage. Just say, look, to be honest, for me, uh, you know, I don't really want to have that full time looking after a husband all the time like that. I just I, I would be just happy, you know, if I, I see him from time to time. That's that's better for me. Yeah. There are people like that, so we shouldn't because it doesn't work for. You doesn't mean that it doesn't work for everybody. Okay. Okay, let's move on to something that is obligatory uh, for all women, according to the majority of the scholars. Why is it that a woman has to seek permission from her male guardian before she is to get married? Isn't that really just giving authority to the men to do kind of whatever they want with their women? No, I actually think that the uh, system of having a a chaperone or a guardian uh, in relation to marriage is there to protect the woman, not to oppress her. And that's because... Typically, if you look at uh, societies that didn't have this before, there was no protection for the woman, and she might fall for a guy or just like a guy or a guy, you know, give a, you know, gives her some attention, and she doesn't look if he's good or not for her. Or when it comes to negotiating or discussing about things like the mahar, about you know how much money she's going to receive when she gets married, or what he's going to give her, or where they're going to live, mm-hmm. she doesn't have anybody to stick up for her. She's going to sit there and negotiate with the guy's family like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the job of the wali is to look after the girl that is in his care. It's not to oppress her. And that's why we have a system to handle when the wali oppresses a woman. And that's what we call al-awal, where a wali prevents his daughter or the woman under his care from getting married. And she's got a good proposal and he says, I don't, I, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to get you married mm-hmm. to this person. And in that case, she has the right to go and complain. And until today, this is very common. And you, you know, if you go to the, the courts or you go to the masajid in the countries where there aren't courts, it's full of people coming and say, you know, this is what's happening. And the imam simply says, okay. Or the judge simply says, okay, bring the father to me. What's your reasoning behind refusing this proposal? He said, I'm refusing this proposal because, uh, you know, I don't want her to marry a religious guy or I don't think it's good for her to marry a religious guy. Straight away, he takes that right away from the parent, give it to somebody else, or he takes care of it himself. The whole purpose of this is to protect the to protect the woman. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, "Inni uharij alaykum haqq al da'ifi." Al kama qal ﷺ. He said, "I'm gonna burden you men with two things." Haraj, you know, the religion is not a religion of haraj, right? Mm, yeah. Two people in society, you have to take care of them. Al yatim wal mara, the orphan and the woman, you have to take care of her. So the job of the wali is to find a good person for her, to make sure that her decision that she's made on who she wants to marry is being made with her eyes open, and also to make sure that the marriage itself, she's getting her rights. And she has someone to stick up for her rights and negotiate for things on her behalf and make sure that she's getting all of her rights. And to be honest, I think if you just look at societies where they don't have that, and people just get into relationships and go out. You, to be honest, you can see the harms that has upon people. It's so easy. People, you know, take people in. Uh, they they take pe- advantage of people. Mm-hmm. You know, they sweet talk them. They you know give them a bit of attention. And then suddenly you realize this person. Hold on a second. You know, this person is already in another relationship with somebody, or this person is uh, doing something they shouldn't be doing, or they're not willing to give you your rights, or they're not good for you. I have to have some something there that makes that guy scared mm. you know that future husband makes him actually fear allah and sometimes people fear allah because of their taqwa and sometimes fear they fear allah because of the you know the sultan any yeah. the authority that is over them so that's important to have somebody there to 
give that protection and that uh, cover for her. It's not there to oppress her, and that's why she has the right to complain if it's not done properly. What if her sister says, uh, I mean, I'm, I don't need looking after. I'm, uh, you know, I'm living in the 21st mm -hmm. century. I'm quite capable of marrying myself to someone else. Why has Islam obligated someone to look after me all the time? Again, I would say that Islam is a religion of submission, and our job is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if that's what Allah Azawajal has legislated, there are many times we think we know something is good for us and it's not good for us. Perhaps you hate something, it's good for you. Perhaps you love something, it's bad for you. Allah knows and you people don't know. Many times we think we know what's good for us. Mm. And yes, there is a movement in this society that's telling women that you don't need this, you mm. don't need this. But to be honest, when you just open your eyes and look around you at other people, you actually see how much it's needed. Mm. And you actually realize that to be honest, yeah, it is needed. And yes, it's also needed for the men to take that job seriously because there are situations where the welly doesn't take the job seriously. The welly is just, you know, either doesn't care. A lot of times in cases of, of, of Muslim uh, reverts, revert sisters, the welly doesn't care. It's bring anybody just, you know, so I'll say, uh, I'll, I'll do the, sign the necessary form or whatever. But actually those marriages, you know, subhanAllah, there's, there are difficulties yeah. in that for many people, not for everyone, but for a lot of people, yeah. there mm -hmm. are difficulties. And again, we also say and remind people that it's not about individual people. There are individual women who be perfectly capable of and fine if they did this by themselves. But it's not about individuals. It's about what's right for the whole Muslim community. Yeah. And it's about showing your submission to Allah in Islam. This is what Allah has decided for me. I believe that there is a wisdom, whether I can see that wisdom or whether I can't see that wisdom. For me, I look at it and to me, it seems very clear, but maybe that's through marriage counseling and dealing with divorces mm -hmm. and things like that, that it seems to me to be very, very clear. But if it's not clear to you, you only have to establish, Allahu amrana bihada. Is it Allah who commanded us to do this? If yes, then, then you know, Allah, azawajal, Allah will not let us, cause us to be lost. And both sides have to come with their part. Obviously, it's for the women to submit, but also the, for the men, it goes back to their qawama not being something praiseworthy or something good. It's actually a huge responsibility that they're going to be questioned about on the Day of Judgment. It's a huge responsibility. Allah azawajal, said, وَأَخَذْنَ مِنْكُمْ مِثَاقًا غَلِيظًا He took from you a heavy oath. It's a heavy, it's a weighty responsibility. Your marriage to a woman is a very, very heavy responsibility and serious thing in the sight of Allah. And the one who doesn't treat that woman well, they will have to answer to Allah for that. Mm -hmm.